Tracy Spencer. Welcome to the Hey Sunshine podcast. What is up, girl? What is up? <laughs> oh my God. I feel like this has been a long time coming and I'm like, oh man, I feel like we need like a drum roll or like, you know, entrance music to get you on the show. <laughs> what though? I was just thinking about this before when I was filling up my water to come down here. And I was like, how have we only known each other for like not even two months maybe? And I'm like, I, I, I actually feel like I've known you for a long time. When you do creative projects together, you go deep real fast. Totally. It's like you're getting straight in bed with them. I feel like you know my soul and we can't go back from that now. We can't. No, we're like soul sisters. It's it. So maybe we'll start with context because people might be like, wait, what? We're like, I missed a step here. So Trey slid into my DMs maybe like two or three months ago. I was like, I'm seeing your website in a week. Need to do that. Let's go. And then we pretty much became besties within the week because we were in each other's pockets for like every day. I think we were literally messaging like a hundred messages in a day. Yeah. And like, that's music to my fucking Aries heart. That was the best. When it's like, we got in, it was pow, pow, pow. And then it's that weird thing when you finish a project or if anyone has like business clients or, or clients and then you end your client container and it kind of feels like a mini breakup and it's yeah. like, oh my God, like, I kind of want to text you, but like, we're not on a contract anymore. Like, like, where do we stand? Yeah. yeah. Like, oh my God. <laughs> I know I felt that afterwards. I'm like, hmm, should I message Trace? And I was like, I'll just hit up your Insta. Um, by the way, everyone follow Trace on Insta. She is hilarious. She does like the funniest reels. Um, I, you just have me in stitches, everyone. <laughs> Um, I often think like people that don't get my sense of humor or they'll come across and be like, who's this? And they'll be like, what? What's <laughs> happening here? I love it so much. Well, you're you just going to get around it. Get light bulbs, guys. It's all of it. <laughs> <laughs> so today, what well, I was going to talk about you and your epic magic um, and like all of the things, what have I got on my list? Like being a light worker and how to tap into your intuition and use your authentic power for good. So it's going to be a journey. Anything with you, we could start here and end up, you know, all over the place, but I love it. Um, Maybe let's dive in to start with your human design and star sign because I feel like that's going to help set the scene. Oh, girl. <laughs> uh, so star sign, I'm an Aries. I get all the mixing up. Aries sun, is that the main one? Aries yep. sun, Saggy rising, Gemmy moon. How do you Number not have, five. no, you have Leo somewhere. I have Leo as my MC. Uh-huh. Okay. Right. Which I recently discovered when I had a astrology reading and she was like, do you like resonate with like being like a bit of a performer? And I was like, oh, <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking really? about. <laughs> I love like, it. You really need to own this. And I'm like, <laughs> I feel like I am, you know, but I can, I can lean into that a little bit more. So very much the Leo <laughs> energy in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and human design generator one, three generator one three oh, I love it you're such generator energy it's the best that's why yeah. working with you was so good because I'm projector generator and we're like yes well I was works. so surprised that you are not a sackle bean like when you're a project mm. but I mean also you like really drop in and go like laser focus in your zone so I can see that but your energy that you bring I was like how yeah. are you not uh, I've got a defined ego I think that's my I think that's where I got my juice from but I, it's not like consistent it's like I need to yeah. go in and then and then tap out and then go in and tap yeah. out. Um, yeah. But that's why and I love working with generators. catching the creative chaos, I reckon. Like yeah. you can just big vision it, like grab all the pieces and then dial it in. Like I guess mm-hmm. my OBM is a projector and sometimes I'm like, sorry. Yeah, like, sorry. sorry. Just going to dump this shit. This. Like, I'm, like, I'm launching tomorrow in one hour. Can you yeah. hear it? I'm just like, fucking hell, Trace. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But that's what we do. We just capture all the pieces and be like, here's how it lands. This is it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely yeah um so trace and i just bonded before this call over our um i wouldn't say hate but like you know when like someone's like what's your story and you're like shit where do i start what do i go into do i tell you about my upbringing my mom my dad where do i start how much time you got yeah yeah (laughs) so we're not going to go there but um do you want to tell everyone your sort of elevator pitch on like your magic and what you're here to do yeah so i mean hey let's be honest (laughs) it's probably changing a little week to week yeah I'm here Depending on it. what's going down in the fucking soul system. Uh, but overall, I, I mentor, well, really, I write, talk and teach about living your light work and um, kind of activating your authentic power. Mm. So really, I work with creative entrepreneurs and multi-passionate women generally, um, yeah, that have really unique creative or intuitive gifts. And we're here to mm. serve in whatever way that looks for us and whatever capacity that looks for us. And just really, my, I think my biggest piece is like 
somehow I don't this I'm owning this as my magic if you come into my field you will leave a little bit more yourself Mm. like I seem to have this thing where people you know come into a, a session with me or you know hook up for coaching or something like that and I'll be talking to them and I'm like hmm so this like really funny fucking part of you or this real like deep bitch part of you or this real like where's this in your business why can't Mm -hmm. I see any of this and it's almost like this permission of like oh I can bring that part of me like oh I can I can be that I can be that a bit witchy I can be a bit Mm. different I can be a bit unique and um that's what I love the most when when I'm doing my thing is like there's something that moves in other people of like Mm. yeah hey I'm not I'm not claiming this part of myself or I want this part of myself to be seen. And when, you know, when we be fully seen, we start to get fully booked and all the things. All the good things. Do you know what, Trace? I think you are the permission slip. Like, so when I see you, I see someone who's like living authentically, creating a business authentically, showing up authentically. So even when you came into my field, I was like, holy shit. I'm like, I've got work to do to, you know, get into my authentic self. So I feel people come into your space it's like you are the permission slip it's like you don't really even need to say anything but just witnessing you that's when their magic starts to unfold even more have you have you experienced that yeah and thanks babe yeah I really obviously received that. that's a really kind <laughs> um thing to reflect yeah and yeah that's a, a beautiful thing something I was actually just writing because I'm starting to collect stories and notes and lessons for an event that I'm teaching uh in a month's time and I was thinking today that we get so caught up on, oh my God, what is my gift and what is my skill and what is my elevator pitch and what is my fucking bio and what is this? And underneath all that, like our energy alone is the value. The skills are the cherry on top. The the gifts are the cherry on top. Like that's all the add-on, but like our energy in the room, first and foremost, is the value. Your energy and your business. Like people come to you, of course, for your wizardry and, and web design and all that, but I loved working with you because of your energy and who you are and that's why I chose you. And the rest mm. is just like, is just the ad but I think we get so caught up on really nailing everything else that we forget like hey I'm the value first and then all of that comes on top mm-hmm. you know and really owning that and when we can own that in terms of like cool what what parts of me aren't I really letting people see or what parts of me do I let my besties see and they love me for but then I come over to my business and think I need to be a robot or think mm-hmm. I need to um, I need to look professional and I need to sound coachy and I need to look like I have my shit together like no, we need to say that you're human. <laughs> I think, And I think like humanness is the part that we resonate with so much in other people's businesses. And it's something that I'm unlearning every day. It's just like, okay, how can I just be more human? Yes, I fucked yeah. up, like all of the things. Yeah. And what, like it's, yeah. it's online right now. Everyone cracks on about, you know, online's really fake and blah, blah, blah. It's highlights real, like sure. But also like it's our responsibility to keep it real. If we are building businesses leading from a heart place or soul led business, or, you know, if you're a light worker in business, like first and foremost, we're the, we're the ones leading this new paradigm of business. So it's our responsibility to keep it real. It's our responsibility mm-hmm. to show humanness. It's our responsibility to not be big fakey, fakey pants, you know? Big like, fakey, <laughs> fakey. Uh, can we just timestamp this? <laughs> Let's give you a quote. Don't be a big like, fakey, fakey pet. Yeah, like everyone's like, oh, the online world, it's like, you know, everyone's fake. It's like, well, don't be fake then. Yeah, yeah, like, or you're, bring you're the realness. Of it. You're mm. part of it, yeah. So what advice would you have to someone who's like really stuck in like perfectionism mode mm. and they're wearing their fakey, fakey pants? What advice would you have to like actually just step into their authenticity and their power? Yeah, well, I think it, a really interesting activity I've been getting a few clients to do is literally come back to the best best friend thing. Like if you're texting mm. your bestie, if we were having a conversation on the couch and I'm frothing out on some business stuff and I'm telling you about an offering or telling you about what I the vision I have or whatever, that language and that level of energy and that level of passion, can I still feel that when I translate it over to Instagram or social media? Mm. Like where does it start to get clunky and why? Because I think, I mean, gosh, babe, there's so many layers to this. There's that I think is the first thing to look at. Like where, where do I, where's their clunkiness between how mm. I speak in real life versus how I show up in my business? Um, and then where do I feel unsafe in being my full self? I mean, layers on layers to that. Like yeah. I remember doing an Instagram live, like I think it was maybe two years ago. And I was like, how high school fucked us up from being fully seen. Mm, literally. <laughs> but it's so true. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, that I mean, now yeah. the freaking tagline. Yeah. Um, because everyone's like, that for oh, a hook? I feel that she's speaking to me. Uh, but it seriously is. It's like all mm. those times 
that we opened up, you know, whether it was like we showed a sensitive part of ourselves or we, we talked about our intuition and these things that we felt or um, could see or anything like that. Or, you know, we were really fucking smart at school and then we got teased for being too smart or we got teased for being too sporty or we got teased yeah. for not being sporty. Like anything where it's like we had that beautiful vulnerability of sharing a part of our heart or our true self and it maybe got shut down. Mm. Or it's like we, we presented this really creative like we wrote a story in English or something and we're like, oh my God, this is so good. I'm so proud of this. And then it was like marked really crap or something like that. So all of a sudden we create, of course, stories and belief systems and layers around that. So it's like kind of going back to where, where did I learn that it was unsafe to be myself? And Mm -hmm. I think of course doing a bit of work around that, but just the awareness of that of, okay, that was, I'm going to speak myself, little girl trace, but like empowered boss bitch woman trace over here. I got this. Mm. I'm, I'm I'm safe to actually lean into this a little bit. I'm safe to, um, you know, be seen in this, and and I and I can handle the rejection. Like I'm, I've got the tools and I've got the awareness mm. that, like, yes, it hurts and it's not fun, but I know I'll be okay. And I think just it's just practice. It's yeah. just practice of let me lean into this um, Instagram live or this Instagram story or this post. Let me lean into vulnerability like one at a time. Like you don't mm. have to balls to the wall it and go zero to hero one day because that will like your nervous system will be like error, error, like yeah. fucking run and hide under the covers and you'll be like mid launch and you're like, I'm Shit. fucking, I'm just, I, like no one cares if I'm never posting anything again. I'm going to throw my phone on the wall and pretend there's nothing fucking exists. Vulnerability hangover. Yeah. Times a thousand. Really? <laughs> it's like, don't, you don't need to do that, but it's like, mm even the intention of like, I'm going to lean into being more myself. And you know, I'm sure you've had this babe where things start reorganizing in your life, just from that intention, like friendship Mm. groups, people that you have in your circle, clients that start coming in. Like if if you just hold that strong of like, I want to be seen as my true self and I want to be loved as that, you know, show me what you got universe. It it starts happening. Mm. Not always in fun ways, but it it will present. (laughs) I was just going to say, watch out initiation. (laughs) There's like a little asterisk on that. (laughs) Blame Trace when this happens. Yeah, Yeah. like no responsibility. (laughs) So it kind of sounds like it's like by by doing this, it's like every day just try a little bit more, lean into this authenticity. Yeah, it doesn't need to be this whole sort of like clean out and like show up with, you know, messy bed hair, no makeup, freaking, you know, in your PJs. Here for it, but also maybe not. (laughs) And just know what is authentic and true for you. Because what's authentic to me looks different to someone else and looks different mm. to someone else and looks different to someone else. So it's like, I think there's just brutal honesty with yourself where it's like, yeah. where, am, where am I still showing up from a place of I should look like this or be like this or speak like this versus mm-hmm. like, I want the freedom of being fully me. Me. And what, what can that, yeah. what can that look like? What can that feel like? How can that be exciting rather than scary? Mm. You know? So I want to like zoom back on the trace timeline. Where was a point where you realized Oh, and there might not have been a point, but where you realized, hold on a minute, I'm not being me. Like this has all been a mask. This has all been bullshit. Like I need to turn this around. Was it like a clear defined moment or was it kind of like this transition? Yeah. Yeah. So what's really quite funny and interesting about this, and I think this is why it's part of my big sole purpose here, is I truly believe from the start, so I've been in business coming up eight years now, from the very start, the comments I would get from people is you are so authentic and real. Mm. Like that has not changed from day one. Like I was showing up speak at speaking gigs, fucking bare feet, like dropping (laughs) F bombs when I was like 24 or something. And Mm. everyone's like, who is this chick? And like, of course some people didn't like it and that was okay. But something I'm really proud of is from day one, I've been exactly who I am. I don't, I don't know where I got that ballsiness from. I don't know Mm. what possessed me. (laughs) Um, but I, I, something I will say is I learned a big lesson last year mm. and I think the online, the online landscape just has been doing really groovy things in the last couple of years. And what's cool about that is it makes us anchor more deeply into who we are. Like we can, we can jump on things and we can, you know, okay, maybe I should try that. We can try things on just like a new little outfit, but some things will feel icky and not true. And some mm. things will feel really good. And I think it's, it's just playing around with you know again what feels true and all those things but last year there was there was a a period for me where we're starting to see you know in the coaching industry wow like this is really going off or this is really working or I'm seeing Mm. a lot of people do this and they're having big financial success hmm maybe I should try something like that or maybe maybe like am I missing something here Mm. you start to question like 
do I need to change who I am? Like, am I, am I not good enough? Like, I feel like I'm at that level, but how come that's got, you know, the comparison and things come Mm -hmm. in. So there was a season last year where I remember, you know, like at my core, I'm literally a fucking barefoot farm chick, like literally grew up in the country on a farm, like half Bogan, whatever. Um, so Flannelette, core cat, that sort of stuff, but you know, <laughs> kind of, almost. Yeah. Um, no, but um, yeah, I, and then so I started to question, like, okay, maybe maybe that part of myself isn't good enough. Like, maybe I do need to change something here. And I remember even just changing, like, I remember getting a, a, a photo shoot, and even my branding a little bit changed last year when I was experimenting. And I just remember like being in the excitement of like, yeah, I feel creative and I want to try these things, and then just getting it all back and just like being like fuck this isn't me Mm. like what am I fucking doing you know and just that that real it's a real heart feeling of like I just feel like I've betrayed myself yeah to try and fit into a fucking box and I've betrayed myself to try and look a certain way because underneath I'm I'm feeling that maybe I maybe there is something missing about me or maybe I maybe I can't Mm. just be fully myself and be successful so I feel like that was a, a huge lesson for me Again, we know that we're always going through lessons with our purpose and what we're here to teach, right? So, of course, I had to be served that up in a silver platter. But (laughs) it was such a good reminder for me to anchor more deeply into like, fuck that. Like, Mm. I actually, you know, I have that saying and I remember you you, when you were doing my website and we were talking about it, like, you don't need to change who you are to be a star. Mm -hmm. And Like, it's so true. And I just got that lesson. And the more that I be myself, like, I I get paid to be me. At the, you know, like everyone, like the more you you are, the more you're going to get paid. The more abundance yeah. comes to you, the, the more your your clients just fucking love you. The more people want to be around you because of your energy, because of your authenticity, because you just mm. you just own who you are, and you're not, you know. And that's so magnetic. Yeah. When it's coming from such a grounded and pure place. So, yeah, I feel like I really, not even at the start of my business, babe. It was the last year for me that I mm. that I learned that lesson again of trying to trying to fit in and then be like. This. And I'm I fuck out. fitting in. I'm out. It's it's kind of funny, and I don't know if you've seen this trend. Like the coaching industry feels like this copy paste, copy paste, copy paste. Yeah. Template over everyone's business and everyone's branding and and the way things look. And it's kind yeah. of like I think that's really an opportunity for you know light workers, like heart soul led mm-hmm. businesses, to be like, okay, fuck that. Like I'm gonna step into my authenticity, create something that's truly unique, and then shine from that way. Yeah. Um, Cause like, I'll, I'll have people come to me and be like, Oh, I want like, you know, the, um, the cream and the black branding with like the black font. And I'm like, uh-huh. no, no, no. I'm like, that's what your ego wants because you mm-hmm. think that that's going to get you X, Y, Z goals. But I'm like, what does your soul want? Like, what does your business from an energy standpoint want? And then let's design from there. Oh, and thank God that you are calling people on that. Honey, yeah. <laughs> because it, you're so right. Like there's two things I want to say here. The first is like, especially in the coaching world, if someone comes across your work and we can tell who your mentor is just by looking at your branding, you're mm-hmm. not in your authentic power. It's so because, funny, isn't it? No, Seeing like it, you, will yeah. be, you will go to pit and you'll be like, I know who you're, I know exactly who you're copying. I know exactly who your mentor is. And you've just completely betrayed your own energy and your own gifts. Mm-hmm. You know, like, and, and underneath that, it's like, where do you not feel good enough? Yeah. Or the but piece that you said before, you where do you feel like you're missing something that you have yeah. to take someone else's strategy? Yeah. And I'm, and this is not about like, of course, take creative inspiration from other people, but make it your own. Like mm. don't, don't template it. And yeah. And we know, we know when we land on people's stuff and it's like, I, I know who you're working with. And I just think that yeah, straight away that that's a fucking that's a red flag for me. That's a turn off because like you want to be original, like you want to initiate, not regurgitate. Mm. You know, and so much of the co- of the coaching world right now is regurgitation, and mm. there's no energy behind it. You know, yeah, because it's just like every time it's just diluted, and it's like there's no power in that. I kind of feel, and you know, I I want to say this with um a cap I don't know maybe a caveat to it, but it feels like the coaching industry is this sort of pyramid scheme of coaching. Like it's like, but it, like not in a way I of like, like we're going yeah. to go. I mean, for now three hours. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? It's like this person closes this person, da, 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 and there's yeah. one person at the top, and then it's all just filters out. Mm. And and you can see, you can follow it up the chain of like who's working with who, and da, 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 da. yeah, it's interesting. It's very interesting to watch. From you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm stepping into biz coaching from a very authentic standpoint, but it's like yeah. it's interesting to see from the outside. 
yeah and again everyone's everyone's doing their own thing but just just always be checking is this is this true for me Mm. like if I didn't see anyone else how they're doing it what what's birthed from within me versus like let me grab onto these other things that I'm seeing and Mm. try and make a version out of that and and you know especially in the terms of branding like luxury branding is really fucking trendy you know it's it's stunning it's beautiful of course but make sure it's true for you because there's a lot of people trying it on but it's like does the shoe fit yeah I'm not not sure if this is actually who you are you Mm. know like a lot of people and I and I talk about this with light workers it's you're trying to to create your business and make your business and your branding look like money is one of your top values when actually money's not one of your top values Mm. and it's absolutely fucking 100% okay if it is and own that but for a lot of light workers you're acting like money is your top value and it's not community is creativity is connection is and when you start to do branding that is looking from the outside like you know more people will work with me if I if I look polished or I look this way or I look like I have fucking cool shit like mm. yeah, maybe a certain degree but don't build your businesses that way if money is not your top value mm. because you're gonna like your community your community is a manifestation of you yeah so the more you can be true to you the more you're like I am working with fucking legends you know because I'm being legendary self yeah exactly yeah well it's like that saying it's like your vibe I know it's you know used and used again but your vibe does attract your tribe it's like your energy does attract the same like like energy yeah and like trends whatever trends they are online online whether it's branding whether it's reels whether it's what people are saying or short written or long written or whatever it's like when you're so anchored in your authentic truth, trends just don't touch you. Mm. They honestly don't. Like if you're jumping on trends every five seconds, your energy is fucking scattered. Yeah. You know, and you're not actually grounding your own creativity and grounding your own power, which is a lot better use of your time. Totally. So yeah. what would you suggest for someone who, because it's so easy when you're on Instagram and you're on TikTok and you're on all the things and you're seeing all this amazing stuff out there, it is so easy to get caught in the trap of, I'll just do this or I'll try that or do this. Like what would your suggestion um, to someone who's sort of in that trap of trying trends, trying things on, not feeling like it's them, what would be your suggestion to kind of come back into their authenticity? Yeah. Well, I'm going to talk about this in terms of our creative energy, right? So our creative energy, I believe, doesn't run out when we're running with it. Mm -hmm. When we stop running with it in terms of let me try this, let me try this, let me do this, and scattering around, we get out of our own flow and pe- we can feel it. We feel when we're exhausted. We mm. feel when we're burnt out. We feel when we're clunky and we're when we're... So I know for me as a generator, I get frustrated as fuck. Like I'm just like, oh, I'm like, hey, it's not, it's not, it's not working. Like it's not this flowing. isn't me, this isn't mm. my expression. Like know what that sign is in yourself. And, you know, at different seasons of business, if you're just starting, you maybe are going to require to try a few different things and be Mm. okay with that if that's the season of business you're in. Like experiment, try on different outfits, try on different, as in like, I mean, try on different ways. That's Yeah, business outfits. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, Try different colours. Like really give yourself some some grace to ground into it. That's Mm. okay. But as as a bit of a seasoned business owner, it's like just do that little check-in with yourself because I think sometimes we can get shiny shiny thing syndrome or whatever it's like yeah. oh, well that that's really going well for them like let me try that and you go into this rushy energy mm. um so yeah I, owning the season in terms of try some things out and experiment but notice when it's just coming from this like oh I like it's coming from a lack almost yeah of like oh fuck it let me try that as well or oh, like you can just feel it you can mm. feel it but I know for me when I'm when I'm just super anchored in myself and I joke about this all the time like are you grounded in your own business base chakra? Like, like you know, you're like, it's true you. though. It is true. Yeah. If you are grounded in the base chakra of your business, you're not fucking like a hundred miles an yeah. hour. You're just like, I know what I'm doing. I know where I'm going. I'm grounded. My finances are grounded. My creativity is grounded. Like I'm just, I know, I know my vision and I'm, that feels whole and complete for me. It's not like, oh, let me look over there. Let me look over there. Let me scroll for three hours. Oh, I've done nothing this week. I wonder why nothing's moving forward. So, so tell me, how do you like see your business? Do you see it as a part of you? Do you see it as an entity creating Mm -hmm. with you? Do you see it as none of that stuff? Like, like I'm just, I'm picturing because you said it's got, it's got chakras potentially. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How do you, how do you envision it? Yeah. So 
I would like to say all of the above. <laughs> option C, all option, of the above. Option C. Because I, there's kind of two things that, yeah, this is my version of seeing it, right? Yeah. A, of course, my business is its own entity, energy, vision, whatever we want to call label there. But I'm the captain of that, right? And I know that when I'm, like usually how I energetically feel is a reflection of my business. So mm. like if I'm feeling stagnant and frustrated, a lot of the time my business is feeling stagnant and frustrated. If I'm mm. moving energy, like move it in the body to move it in the business, you know, like that's kind of how we work as a team. Mm. I'm saying we as in me and my business. Yeah. <laughs> but I also very much agree with we want to have some boundary and separation. So it's not like, yeah. oh, I'm feeling sad today. My business is sad and I can't make any money. Like that's also no deal. You know, like it, <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, no, we don't want that. Um, my business is this, it can be this beautiful thing, but I, I'm the captain that's responsible for moving the energy in it, mm. you know, and working with it. So I see it in that sense. But in terms of, I feel like we've had this chat, but maybe we haven't. And I just, you will notice my energy start to be like, because I just froth this so much. And <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't like teaching business in a traditional sense, as I'm sure you're aware. Oh, really? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, right? Like, oh, sure, horror. that horror. Um, little psycho um so when I'm when I'm looking at different offerings or different um yeah offerings visions services things going on in my business I and I do this with clients like you need to be able to kind of see how the different energies of your offerings kind of work together so I'll 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 get there okay so how I see it. it how I see it is like And of course, this makes sense when you know who I am, Um, the rock star energy. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about coaching offerings here, right? So I always think about um, everything has like, has its own song, has its own energy, has its own color, has its its own little fucking thing going on. Mm. So when I'm like picturing, okay, is this like, is this a, um, is this an offering for a lot of like an intimate or is this an offering for like bigger impact? And it's kind of like, I'll, I'll match it out with, is this, is this a pub gig kind of energy? So yep. is it like intimate in a room mm. coming in for two hours? I'm dropping some songs, I'm dropping some fire and then you get out. So that's like, that's kind of how I see, like if I was going to teach a masterclass, that's yep. the energy of it. So then I adopt the pricing to that. I adopt the marketing to that and blah, blah, blah. If you're coming in for like, a high-end mastermind group or a very intimate, there's five people or something, it's going to be like a VIP backstage pass, babe, you know? Like, mm-hmm. so we got we got to go to, it's going to be higher priced. It's going to be just us. Like, what are you going to see? You're going to see all the behind the scenes of my business. Mm-hmm. I'm going to talk to you in between my jam sessions. Like, you know, it's really that energy. And then it's like, when I'm speaking and teaching my events, when I'm literally speaking on stage with my mic, I'm rocking a concert. Mm. so it's like how I've got to fucking crank the marketing on that I need to bring big energy to that because there's big energy in the room I want a lot of people there like so I energetically be like that's how I see I my love business. it a lot of um, people that I mentor will then go okay what's my version of that mm. so they'll see like they're like oh, okay so my business is going to be like a house so if I'm in the if I'm in the kitchen with and I'm cooking with a girlfriend and we've just got a glass of wine and we're just having chats, that's my private mentoring. Mm. If I'm throwing a garden party at the back and we've got the Barbie on and we've got the lights going and it's like that's my masterclass energy. That's my group event, the group programs or events. Like I want them to be mm. real high connection and chatty and loud and all the things. Um, and then it's like maybe in the lounge room there's like five people sitting around the coffee table going real deep and that's yeah. like that's my mastermind group mm. so you see how it's like you can almost sit sit in a, in a close eye practice or I can just feel because I've practiced so much with my business when certain rooms will light up and be like hey I need your attention like we need to be talking about this offering we need to be moving energy with this yeah and when it's like oh it's not the season for this one right now Mm. like for me it's like it's not the season for backstage pass it's a season of like concert and gigs like you're out there in the world kind of thing yeah that's Um, such a cool way of thinking about it because it's really it's it's giving you personality yeah 100% and Mm. that's why a lot of people for me they're always like how do you just know how to market that how do you know how to speak the language of that and it's literally because of that like I'll I'll sit in it and be like I just know like the the energy and the intensity and the language and the lingo and the I know the energy of that room Mm. in my business well you're giving a soul and a personality to each of your offerings which when you go to write copy when you go to do the branding you're like oh of course I know what it's going to be because it's it comes through it's like you can visualize it 
book a one-on-one session with me and it's yeah. like no you've got to bring it to life you've got to breathe energy yeah. into this oh that's you know? so good um, yeah so I, 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 yeah I'd be interested if you ever sit with yours and be like hey this this is how I see mine because you might see it as a tree or a garden yeah. or but I was it, like it, is yeah. it a jungle like you know it's yeah. definitely something green um oh, 100% for you yeah so I really love this idea and I think any creative idea that comes to us it comes in an energetic form it's like you know entity oh, spirit yeah. whatever you want to call it and we spoke about this just off the call that when you're launching say your backstage pass you're going to be initiated the shit out of that offering yeah which tests it tests your um it tests your trust and it also tests your knowledge in the space and it gives you so much more to coach on. Can you yeah. talk us through like how that's looked for you? Obviously, you've got your Lightworkers Live Brisbane event coming up. Yeah. You're thick in the initiation now. Can you let us know what's going on? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So something I always remember my beautiful friend, Alex, because uh, we talk so much about the, you know, our creations, are our initiations. Mm. And she was like, all right, Trace, if you want big expansion, you've got to hold the big wobbles. And I talk about this so much in the sense of leadership and especially yeah. as a you know, CEO or business owner, it's like, if you can't hold the shit, you won't hold the lip. Yeah. Like leadership is about equally being able to hold the shit that happens, the fears, the wobbles, the doubts, the, the refunds, the, the, the mm. whatever you get that every business owner gets. If you can't hold that, you will not hold the lip stuff. You will not hold yeah. the big launches, the, the sold out events, the, blah, 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 whatever it is that you're going for. Like mm. you've got to be able to expand your bandwidth and capacity to hold both. And I'm I'm always initiated on that, you know. So for me, it's like right now uh, going over to Brizzy and holding an event that, um, you know, we're holding the vision of 50 people in that room, which mm. it's a lot of energy to hold when I'm just speak, up there speaking myself. And, of course, it starts to be like, who do you think you are? Like, you don't have any good shit to teach. Like, um, who's going to listen to this fucking random little freckly farm chick? Uh, like, it literally brings out all, all the stories. Like, yeah. All this shit. Like, you think you're fucking Oprah? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I am, actually. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, it really is like, okay, mm. I, I deeply trust myself and I deeply trust my intuition. I deeply trust there's a reason my energy is needed there at that time. And I just have to keep coming back to that. Like Mm -hmm. I will show up and and do the best I can on my side of the table. And then I trust the universe is going to meet me there. Yeah. You know, like if I go big, the universe goes bigger. Um so it's just all it's just really all that imposter syndrome stuff and just all Mm. that, you know, can you even hold the energy of that room and blah 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 all, all the things just all the things. fun things and, um, you know yeah you know, another thing and I love that we're riffing on creativity right now and I feel like you know even some of this I'm like I'm probably going to lose some people halfway through this combo but some people not are at really all motivated by this Mm-mm. as well um because it's a unique way of looking at business I yeah. guess but something towards the second half of the year that I'm really stepping into is is creating containers specifically for highly creative women because mm-hmm. that's very activating for me but then all of a sudden it's like, well, are you creative <laughs> enough? Like, well, how do you, like, you're not a painter. So and it's like, that's oh, really it's like it's shut my, up, boys. Oh, yeah. But owning, owning my version of creative gifts and my mm. expression, knowing it's equally as powerful as someone else's creative gifts, you know, like we can't devalue our gifts because they look different to someone else's no and like your creativity like public speaking is a creativity is a form of it you know and it's like painting or whether it's branding or whatever it's like whatever your creativity is and I do think that you hold you get creative so you hold them well in the space yeah yeah but it's it's just such a funny thing because like I'm like yeah I froth creativity but it's like as soon as I put the intention of like I'm gonna hold it like a mastermind specifically for creative women and, and really mm. activate their creativity more. I'm like, who am I? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Shit about it. <laughs> Even though I've built a creative business for eight yeah. years, all the things that come with that, it's like, well, I know some things. So but- note the imposter syndrome never stops. We just get better at what we do and just got to push yeah. through it. <laughs> like fear will always be at the show. Just don't let it sit front row. Yes. Oh, I love that. God, you've got yeah. so many one-liners. <laughs> Girl, that's why I know. That's what I do. That's why I need to teach. <laughs> that's I why I sometimes it. have good things to say. Yeah. So I want to, I want to like drop into like vulnerable chat. What? Because we talk about the shit and lit, and the lit. So what's been something shit recently, and what's mm-hmm. been something lit? Like how? Like I want to, I want people to like really see like the balance of it. Yep. Yep. Okay. Recently, it doesn't have to be. It could even be an example in the past winners. Yeah. 
Okay. So I feel like Okay, here's actually here's a good example that I that I shared um actually on a call yesterday. Um and it's all about learn like I think a big lesson, I reckon a lot of people of your listeners will resonate with this, is so much of us have lost trust in ourselves in the last six to twelve months because life has happened, big changes mm-hmm. have happened, big seasons of our life have happened, like business that we've been called to pivot in certain ways and um, get creative and all that, that a lot of people have lost trust in themselves. Like, mm. oh, I had a launch that didn't go as well as it, it went last time. So that, you know, we're making that mean something about us. Or, oh, fuck, I used to make this much and now I'm in a season where I, I haven't exponentially grown. So that must mean that I'm shit or that must mean something about that. I, just all the stories that come mm. up. So I was reflecting about this, where this like trust piece has come up for me and <clears throat> moving into a financially expansive season again and and launching a few things and just being really seen like you know when I'm flying across the country to teach an event that I don't really have a strong community I just feel called to go there it's like Mm. that that takes a lot of fucking belief and self-trust of like you can figure it out like it'll be sweet but anyway getting off track here on a tangent um I was noticing even the the containers I want to launch I was starting to notice like um what like why do I feel unsafe with more Mm. like what feels like even you'd ask yourself that like what feels unsafe about more money what feels unsafe about more opportunities coming to me what feels unsafe about being seen in front of more people Mm. and I was reflect reflecting back to um you know when I came off maternity leave when we had Ollie that first year of business uh that first year after having Ollie so my first year as a mum mum was my biggest financial year in business wow right that which, is expensive yeah a lot of fucking stories that I had of my business goes to shit once I become a mom and I'm going to be burnt out like I was doing that yeah. work three days max a week you know and I was I was the breadwinner of our family like mm. it like I cranked that year it was amazing it was some of my best like just funnest season but then of course I was still breastfeeding and all the things so they got to a point where I was like I'm feeling a bit cooked over here mm-hmm. and with bigger money comes sometimes new lessons of bigger expenses or bigger bills and stuff like that so what happened was I created this story like the default story became like I can't hold bigger abundance because then something's going to happen like a bill will come or like uh, yeah yeah. like oh we got a big tax bill which is Mm -hmm. a fucking great sign girl you made a lot of moolah like hooray but just not being as prepared for that as I could have been Mm -hmm. because I just hadn't been through that exact stage yet in business. So looking back, it's like always lessons. But for me, it was like, oh, okay, that don't feel very good. Having a big bill, like that's brought up some fear. That's brought up some holy fuck. What are we going to do? How are we going to navigate this? Like this is new for our family, like all the things. So it's like holding the lit of a beautiful, expansive season and then Mm -hmm. the shit of, okay, cool. We just, we need to prepare for that better next time or, or whatever it is. So it's kind of like, noticing where you've been through a really expansive period and if if anything because it doesn't always happen like I really believe in expansive and that can keep moving and nothing nothing bad ever has to happen that's a story Mm. for a lot of people but just notice like I think uh, many people have the story of yeah I I was having my best season and then I burnt out I was having my best season then I went through a fucking breakup I was having my best season and then like three clients wanted a refund Mm. and then you create a story that 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 expansive means this and in your body you go okay that's not safe now because that was really scary or that was that was really um vulnerable or that was really fucking hard and it's like don't let that one experience become the default story Mm. you know because there's so many amazing things that come from expansion and that's what we're all working towards and we're here for and we want to be excited and we want to fully receive it yeah but yeah, I think that's that's a big one for me. It's like, again, trusting myself of, yeah, I can hold this abundance and I can mm. hold bigger amounts of abundance and it can keep moving forward. And it doesn't mean something's going to go wrong in my family. It doesn't yeah. mean, fuck, I'm going to, you know, have tax trauma because I've yeah. got this big bill fucking out of nowhere. And yeah. It's like, no, now I've learned, now I've prepped because thank mm. fuck I got that lesson at, you know, half a million than I did at a million. Yeah, exactly. You know? And yeah. it's like always thinking about that, like, if you can, if you can hold whatever, whatever crap or whatever shit or whatever like little road bump is going on right now, mm-hmm. thank God you're getting it now because think about if it was three times bigger. I know. <laughs> you're and like you're oh, grow, shit. You grow, you grow into that though, yeah. right? And it, it makes you respect 
um, like it makes me have so much respect for people that are holding big companies and holding mm. big visions and holding big wealth. It's like there's, there's responsibility with that and there's big lessons, you know, like yeah. but I not, suppose not necessarily I'll... bad, just, just, yeah. just things to upgrade and learn as you go, yeah. Well, and that's why I think every stage of our journey, whether it's, you know, something shit that happens or, you know, a lesson or whatever, it's all embedded at perfect timing to then teach yeah. us what we need to then springboard us forward. And yeah. I, and I really love that you touched on this on this kind of like peak trough pattern that happens. It happens so often in business. And yeah. I don't, I would love to get your take on it because I think there's a few sort of levels at play. I think self-sabotage, a big one. I think burnout, mm-hmm. definitely. And I do think kind of like being afraid to shine, being afraid, it's like tall poppy mm-hmm. syndrome. Like I'm going to cut yeah. myself down because I don't want someone else to cut me down. Yes. What's be, have you seen them sort of all play out? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, big time. Yeah. And I think also, yeah, I think also with running a creative business in some way, and I know a lot of business owners will be like, I don't agree with that, but like we're not rocking up to a job where we get paid the same amount every week like we would in corporate. So like let go of that needing needing to be the reality because we create so many stories around Mm. that being wrong or because that's just what we, a lot of people know. And then they come into business. They're like, well, fuck, I'm not, I'm not getting paid the exact same amount. And it's like, even if you went to a shop, like if you mm. went and to a clothing shop, they probably don't make the same amount of money every day or every week or every no. month. Like there would, there would be little like cycles and seasons within that as well. Um, of course, there's strategy to it with like, you know, um, monthly recurring revenue and income stacking and all those things. Like there's, there's things we can build into your business model. But mm. I think it's like noticing again, that story of like, why am I not trusting myself to, not just create the expansion, but actually hold it. Yeah. Because a lot of people can create abundance. Not many people can hold it. Mm. You know, it's like, oh, all of a sudden I just brought all this fucking shit I don't even need and I've got no money again. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, oh, or all of a sudden I've had this amazing connection with my partner and we're feeling more intimate than ever. Mm. Oh, and the next day I fucking start a fire out of nothing. Mm-hmm. And it's like, again, why am I not feeling safe in shining? Where am I not feeling safe in holding more money? Where am I not feeling safe in um, people wanting to work with me? Mm. Like all the things. Yeah. And it is, it is such a lesson to kind of like hold it all. Yeah. You're so right. It's like, it's one thing to get it and it's another thing to hold it. Yeah. And it's just, it's practice. Like, Mm. like, you know, we don't come out of the womb learning, learning, knowing all this and like. Do you not? I know. I know, babe. I'm I'm so sorry. I'm not at your level. My enlightened master. I'm just a grasshopper. I'm a grasshopper. Um, but it's so true. I think we don't. We don't like. We need to be a bit more kind to ourselves in business. Mm. Like we're learning and growing and evolving and upgrading as we go. Like this is on the job training yeah. every yeah. fucking month. You know, oh, damn it. Yeah. And for some reason, we're like, what? like I'm. I can definitely speak for this. I judge myself so much. Where it's like, mm. I should know better. I was like, how? No one has taught me this. Like I'm literally learning as I go. Yeah. It's like having grace in the whole process and being like, I'm doing the best that I can. Like, yeah. let's just keep going. Yeah. And I so, think with those, yeah. just sorry, last thing on that, babe, like mm. with the ups and downs, whether it's a relationship thing, whether it's your business, whether it's your finances, like just really look at that. If there is a pattern, like mm. A, the awareness around that, what is it? And then like really starting to to build in some some um you know, scaffolding or process or something where it's like, okay, I need I need to just like stretch my comfort zone with this a little bit because I'm noticing every time we get really intimate, I start mm. shit. Every time my business starts to get um, really expansive, I fucking go off social media for two months and then I come back and start from zero. So it's like, yeah. okay, let's just have a little closer look at that. Yeah. It's it's awesome like when you have your partner who's aware or a business coach or something like that because they know like they're aware of it and they can call you out and call you forward in that as well. Yeah. Like, you know, Blake and I had a very similar thing. It's like every time we got to the best in our relationship, like something would happen or, you yeah. know, something would shift, but we're very attuned to it now that we're like, hang on a minute. Like we were really good yesterday. Like let's yeah. not let's like, not what's all that? this that's just going on. Yeah, I yeah. Know. It's sure. so funny. <laughs> oh, the brain, how we work. Yes. Um yeah. So uh, I've got one more question I want to ask before we do our closing question. And I feel like you are a queen at this, but it's like balancing like the, I call it balancing the woo-woo and balancing the to-do. What are your tips on like navigating oh, mask and femme in business? Oh yeah. Um, love, love, love this. And like, first thing I want to say is we need both. Yeah. We really need both. And I think, um, 
And I think we could argue for both sides of that. But something that I love is that I feel quite integrated. No, I'm not always nailing it, but I, I feel quite integrated in both. Like I can I can move energy quickly. I'm an action taker. I'm a fucking Aries firecracker. Like if you tell me something, I'm like, done, let's go. Yeah. Um, so for me, the probably the biggest lesson in the first few years of business, and I, I don't really feel like I ever actually burnt out. I like I haven't experienced that to the to the point a lot of people, a lot mm. of other people. But I was definitely more, I would say, in my masculine. But at the same time, it's like I find that tricky because when we're very in our cre- – like my creativity is still very direct and mm. fast and all that, but it feels very feminine to me at the same time. So I think, uh, I think a, a big measure of it is like are we feeling grounded in – finances in our like as in our numbers and our behind the scenes and is that feeling clean is that feeling Mm. solid because I think a lot of people are just scared to even look at that we don't we don't we don't trust that like hey I can boss bitch it up like I can look at this like I'm smart I can teach myself we just have Mm. these like I'm done with money so I'm just not gonna do it and it's like no you're not you just need to have a little bit um but then also knowing knowing when to take your your pet your foot off the gas a little bit and be like Mm. okay let's just like back it up I need a bit of a season of integration like know when you're in a season of growth and know when you're in a season of grounding Mm. and just being able to move like like a bit of a tai chi master like okay i'm I'm needed over here like i'm in a season where i fucking need to show up like i actually mentioned this on the call yesterday with um a group that i'm mentoring of like what does your business need from you in this season Mm. like what like if you tune into your business what does it actually need from you as the captain as, as the person who's like you know steering the ship and because of what I think there's just that real and in the in the woo-woo in the coaching world it's like you know just sit and meditate and journal and absolutely do those things but do those things as like 20 percent, and then just fucking get out and actually get your hands dirty and do the thing yeah that's what like if you look at any any female entrepreneur or someone that's holding holding the abundance you want or holding the 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 like a company or a business that you're really inspired by, mm. I guarantee they're not fluffing and floating around in their feminine 24 yeah. seven. Like I guarantee that they are moving energy and they are looking at numbers and they are figuring shit out and they are making decisions like. Yeah. And they're launching and doing things. And, they're yeah. launching. Yeah. And yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So um, I just thought I'm of a, a, f- I'm a big fan yeah. of both, babe, is what I will say. <laughs> Come back to that. I went, I could, again, layers to that. Comment, totally to that layers. Part. That yeah, can be the just, next one. Just people being honest with themselves of like, yep, yeah. I've been pussy footing around. Mm. I've been saying I'm showing up, but I'm actually fucking not. I'm just posting photos of my fucking breakfast and thinking that's going to get clients. <laughs> Unless you're a nutritionist, maybe. Yeah, I was like, maybe that could for some people. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. I thought of, I thought of a really random um, metaphor that I'm going to say, and it just came to my mind. I'm like, I don't know where this is going, but let's 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 shoot it. the shit. So you know how you were saying like steering a ship on a boat. So I feel like yeah. that's the masculine energy. It's like grabbing the wheel, taking lead, all that sort of stuff. But I'm like, if you're so stuck in the feminine, looking at the map, trying to figure out your route, trying to you know do the creative things, make your map pretty, mm. your ship's gonna crash because you don't know where you're going and where or you're not steering the Ooh. ship. So that's that just dropped app. in, and I was like, hold on, let's let's do. It. But yeah, anyway. But then it's resonate. like, yeah. So to go more on that, it's like. But then when you've got the map and you've got the structure and you've got the systems and you know the direction of the vision, you're like, cool, let's chuck it on, not even on autopilot, <laughs> but like, you know, we know where we're going. Now I can relax a little bit. Yes. Now let me enjoy the fucking sunshine. Now Pina colada. Be, yeah, reap the rewards a little bit. <laughs> mm-hmm. But because I've locked everything in, it's yes. kind of like someone once said, like, if you think about a river, the feminine is the river and the river banks are the masculine. I love and it. if you've got no river banks, there's fucking water everywhere, man. <laughs> everyone's drowning like what's it's just all over the place and it's like control it's yourself sort of structure like streamline your client onboarding yeah. or you know have a plan for a launch or actually have something grounded that can just like bring it in like I'm sure mm. you've experienced that when you just have a few anchor points and structure or whatever that looks in your business it's like your feminine actually activates by that yeah. it's like oh all right, let's go. This is fun. We've got, we got a framework I'm now. Held. I'm feeling yeah. supported. Like I'm not mm-hmm. all over the place. I love it. I love the Mask Femme chats. We can, we, we can oh. do a whole other podcast on it because there's there's so much to it. Literally, I'm like, what do we just talk? How that, how's that? I don't now? know. What do we just talk about? Crazy. I don't even know where we went. I'm like, oh, still catching <laughs> I'm up. Still, uh, a little, a little motor mouse. <laughs> I love it. 
<laughs> so do you, can you leave us with a um, T-bomb, you know, straight fire uh, mic drop? Mm. I know you will, but. <laughs> like uh, uh, anything? <laughs> anything. Like what's like, you know, just for the listeners, just like their last mm. memory of, of Trace yeah. mic drop. I do have a good one actually that I that I recite to myself and remember <laughs> my who said that oh me oh um, me I'm a genius no and I think this is in regard yeah especially business owners social media everything we've been talking about which is stop trying so hard to look the part and just mm. focus on what's true in your heart mm. God, like that's good. stop trying so fucking hard to look look a certain way or be a certain way or um, keep up with other people or, or run at the same rhythm as other people like stop trying so hard to look like you've you've got your shit together or look like yeah. you're a millionaire coach or look like you don't have just focus on your what's true in your heart focus on what your mm-hmm. gifts are focus on what your energy is focus on what what makes you legendary like that is what people are coming to you for that is what makes you magnetic that is what makes you you um like uh, I'll actually drop in one more truth bomb here, which I think Go is for it. fire as well. And it, it just is like the little cherry on side, top <laughs> side point to this one is especially uh, we talked about luxury branding and look at the part and all the things and everything we see on social media. I want to remind everyone that no one actually like your community doesn't fucking care if you're a millionaire. They actually care about how you make them feel. Mm. Yeah, like like really think about that. Like. It's cool. It's like, yes, let's celebrate the abundance. Fucking here for it. Let, let me celebrate that. Um, I get activated by that. I get very excited by that. Let's let's, let's do the things. Let's do, go for expansion. Mm. But at the end of the day, if you had five people up on a stage and they were all telling you how much money they make or whatever, would you give a shit about that or would you care about how they're making you feel? Mm. Do you feel safe? Do you feel seen? Do you feel can you actually connect with them on some way? Do you actually feel like if you had a conversation with them, they would be able to serve you Mm. because when you take all the shiny shit away what's left yeah nothing just how you feel (laughs) yeah and people that are authentic and real and true Mm. and deeply anchored in service Mm -hmm. like if you literally take all the shiny stuff away and you just line everyone up it's like what are you actually connecting with Mm. I feel like we need some um I know we're doing mugs we're printing some mugs but I'm like we need t-shirts we need banners (laughs) like bumper stickers (laughs) Bumper stickers. Bumper sticker. How good would that be? I'm picturing like a li- like yeah. I, it's coming. It's coming. The vision's coming. <laughs> You're like the surrogate of half my visions as well. Yeah, I yeah. love it. Here for it. Yeah. Um. So, so I, I know you've got your Brisbane event coming up next month, but can you tell us all the ways that people can get in your world? Well, I think come on over to Insta for the yeah. lols, for the light bulbs, for the for the fire and the, for the reels business. For the reels. Yeah. Come for the reels. Um. Yeah, I think that's the best way to connect with me. Someone really cool uh, built my website recently. Have no um, idea. <laughs> <laughs> Some little legend. Um, so yeah, you can kind of read a bit more about my work and what I do and who I am and all the all the fun over there. Yeah. Um, otherwise, yeah, just connect on Instagram and then slide into the DMs. <laughs> slide into the DMs. I'm here do for it. it. Um, well, Trace, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure. I've had so much fun. If you are watching on YouTube, you'll see I haven't wiped the smile off my face the whole time. I think um, we're both just pinging. We're like, yeah, I know. Oh, I'm going to be high. I'm not going to sleep tonight. I'm going to be like. <laughs> um, but I appreciate you. And I know the listeners will love this episode. You're a treat, mate. Thank you so much. Everyone else, thank you for joining the episode. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>